All right, hey guys, welcome back to the channel, or welcome if you are new here. Now, today I thought I would take a question I get all the time and turn it into a video. And that is about my 120 gallon saltwater aquarium. Now, no matter who sees my tank, whether it's in video, in person, whatever, the question I always get asked is how do you keep the tank clean? Is it a lot of maintenance? Stuff like that. So I thought in today's video, we could go over my weekly and bi-weekly maintenance on my 120 gallon tank. So this tank feels like it's not that much maintenance, but in reality, it's actually a ton of work. Reef aquariums are so labor intensive, so you can't really get a reef tank and not expect to do any work. I mean, there's even daily tasks. For example, usually every other day I clean the glass, I clean the outside glass, I feed the fish every day. Um, every once in a while, I'll get in there and you know rearrange some corals that may have fallen off the rocks. So it's kind of an always moving maintenance schedule. However, my bi-weekly maintenance schedule of a water change recently hasn't been working for me. We'll get into that later. So I'm going to have to start amping up to weekly water changes, which is a commitment for sure. But we'll go ahead and go over that process today. The first thing we need to do is top off my auto top off reservoir. I know, sounds weird. Basically, there's a reservoir under my stand that holds fresh RODI water, which is super filtered tap water. And there's a little float valve in my sump that when water evaporates from my saltwater tank, it automatically pumps fresh water into the tank to keep the salinity at the right level. Now, water evaporates, salt doesn't, so we need to top the tank off with fresh water to make sure the salinity in the tank stays stable. So I'm gonna go ahead and run over to my RODI unit. As you can see, we have this beautiful trash can right here, throw a five gallon bucket in there, throw our blue RODI water hose in. Now we're gonna go ahead and wait for this to fill up. So as soon as it fills up, I put the bucket on this little trash can and run a siphon from that five gallon bucket of fresh water into the RODI water reservoir in the stand to fill the reservoir back up so we don't run dry on RODI water. Once that is done, it's time to start making the salt water to do the water change. Same thing with the big trash can. I like to fill up the trash can with 15 gallons of RODI water on this 120 gallon system. I'll make that water and then as soon as that is full, we can bring it inside and start actually mixing the salt water, which is literally just dumping salt in and mixing it around with the wave maker. A few moments later. Now that our massive trash can is filled with 15 gallons of RODI water, it's time to mix that RODI water into salt water, which means we're gonna need salt. And some other stuff like heaters and wave makers. But this right here is what we really need. Now when mixing salt water, you need to make sure it's constantly moving and mixing so that the water actually dissolves the salt. So I'm gonna take a wave maker and throw that in. And then to make sure the salt water right here matches the salt water in there, we put in an aquarium heater to get it to the right temperature. And then we're gonna add our salt. It is half a cup per gallon, so I'm just gonna dump this in. Just like that well you get the point then we just have to go ahead and let this mix and then we'll test the salinity now while the salt water does its thing and mixes up and heats up i get to do my least favorite thing and that is testing the water so today yes i have to test the water we're going to be testing for ph ammonia nitrite nitrate magnesium calcium and alkalinity this will take me like 30 minutes like it's a process and you'll watch the whole process i'm going to throw it on the time lapse so you don't have to sit through the boring 30 minutes that I have to sit through. But without further ado, wish me luck. And 45 hours later, it feels like here are the results. It's really hard for you to see. pH is a tiny bit low at 7.9. Ammonia and nitrite is good. Nitrate is a little bit high, but we're gonna need a water change, so it's really nothing to worry about. Calcium's good, magnesium's good, but alkalinity is a little bit low. Once again, hopefully the water change will help bring that pH and alkalinity back up to where it's supposed to be. But other than that, our results are looking pretty good. Okay, it is a little bit later. We are now freshly mixed to a salinity of 1.025, matching the salinity in the aquarium. Now that our salt water is all mixed and ready to go, we can start prepping for our water change on this aquarium. The first thing I like to do is use my flipper magnet algae cleaner to go ahead and clean some of the glass, not sponsored. I actually tried to do a video with flipper a long time ago and they asked me a whole bunch of questions about my tank and like stuff like that. And then they left me on red, so that's cool. But I still do have a flipper magnet cleaner that I did purchase, it was expensive. But I'll just throw you to a time lapse of me cleaning the glass and then we'll start the water change. 
The next thing I like to do after the glass is clean is take one of these little dish scrub brushes and I like to look, like clean these little, I don't know what they're called, braces. I have them on both sides. And then I also like to scrub my intake. So this is my overflow right here. Scrub that really well, keep it from clogging up with algae. I do the same thing to my wave makers right here. These guys, I just dust them literally just a little bit. The algae flies right off these guys. There's another one right here. Get these guys nice and clean. And then I deep scrub my little outflow thing because it's right under a light. It just gets super nasty. These are my little outflow nozzles or return jets, whatever they're called. And these just get covered in algae. So I just go ahead and scrub these down. This can be done really at any point during the water change process. I just find it easiest to do before, but you can do that literally whenever. We clean the glass, we clean the wave makers, the overflow, the little return jets, all that stuff, and now we're ready for a water change. So I like to do my water change and then I like to clean the sump the next day. And by cleaning the sump, I mean cleaning the skimmer and replacing the filter sock. That kind of gives a chance for all the nasty stuff that you stir up with the water change to get cleaned out through the filter sock and skimmer and then get rid of that the next day. So right now we're gonna do the water change, then we'll clean the sump out tomorrow Without further ado though, we need to start draining the tank. So I'm gonna take out three five gallon buckets, do some gravel vacuuming, vacuum some algae up around the tank, and then take out those three five gallon buckets with the water, and then start pumping the fresh water right in there. So without further ado, let's start draining some water. The tank is now filled back up and we are done with the 15 gallon water change. Now, the reason that we tested the water parameters in the beginning is because I was having some issues with some of the corals closing up and now that we tested the water, I know what's going on. Basically what's happening is my every other week water change schedule is no longer enough to provide my corals with the natural elements in the water that they need to thrive. I'm not gonna get into the whole crazy thing. Basically, my alkalinity is a little bit low, so I need to start doing weekly water changes in order to keep the alkalinity at the correct level for all the coral. It's really not that big of a deal, honestly. But just a heads up, that's what the water testing in the beginning was for. And so now we know that I have to do this process that you're seeing today every single week. But now that the water change is done, I just finished this off with some Fritz glass cleaner. Spray some of this on the glass, take a glass cleaning cloth, and just wipe down all of the glass for that perfect streak-free finish. I'll go ahead and do that a little bit later, but just like that, we're done with the water change. I'll go ahead and let this tank clear up behind me, let it filter through the sump, and we'll come back tomorrow to clean out the skimmer, the filter sock, that's the disgusting part, the skimmer is just so gross. But without further ado, I'll see you tomorrow. And it is the next day. So, our tank, you can't see it at all, but it's nice and crystal clear, and now it's time to dig into the sump and get the dirty stuff clean. So, let's check that out. So, down here is our filter sock. Now, this is honestly really boring. I literally just take that sock out and put a new one in. It's this guy right here. That is a fine particle filter, basically, that takes all the nasty stuff out of the water. That's where the drain goes directly into, so we change that out. And then here is the protein skimmer. Yeah, that's pretty disgusting. So let's turn the skimmer off real quick. And then I'm gonna try my best to go ahead and take this cup off. And here is that disgusting, nasty water. We'll just pop this lid open and oh, it's really bad. So here's all the nasty stuff that skimmer has pulled out. Uh, just dumping it out, you can see how nasty that is. Yeah, so I clean this about every week. We'll just take some sink water and then just give this a good rinse. I don't really deep clean it that often because it doesn't need to be deep cleaned. Uh, it just is what it is, it gets dirty so fast. But I'll just go ahead and give this a nice little rinse out, do this about every week, clean it about every couple months. Then we'll come back under here, put the cup back on the skimmer, and then the skimmer will power back on in about three minutes. With that complete, we have successfully cleaned my 120 gallon saltwater aquarium. You can literally already see just in 24 hours, the sand bed starting to get a little nasty. It just gets dirty so fast with the crazy amount of fish I have in here. I do have a lot of big fish, so the tank just gets dirty fast, unfortunately. But thank you guys so much for coming along with me on this journey of cleaning this tank. Don't worry, I'll be doing the same thing next week. It gets repetitive fast, but thank you guys so much for watching once again, and good bye.